How's it going everybody? It's Coded Condor and welcome back to another chaotic video. Today we're going to be doing my first ever mail unboxing and I'm very excited to do so. Over the past few weeks I've been saving up these envelopes until I felt like I had enough to do a cool video idea like this and now I think I'm at that point. So without further ado, we're going to crack the first one open and I hope you guys enjoy. Now the first creature, although he's not tribeless, is a creature from the past. Known for his memorable appearance in the TV show and being an ancestor of Kaor, I bring you none other than Kiru. While he's printed as an underworld card, Kiru is actually an overworld during the show. The chaotic wiki actually has him listed as quote, one of the greatest overworlders in history. I thought it was so cool how they flipped expectations by having the ancestor of Kaor be everything you thought Maxor's would be. I think he's a must have for any fan of the show and I'm happy that I've added him to my collection. Now as cool as Kiru is, I wouldn't really plan on using him in competitive play, unlike this next card who I actively use on Recode in one of my overworld decks. I use this card all the time and I'm very excited to finally have it in person. It's Drabe, the overworld caretaker Muge. I was excited to find this Drabe because he is max energy at 55 which you love to see. And the reason I use him is his ability. Target creature gains 15 energy for only one Muge encounter. For those of you that do play, you know overworld decks are pretty healing based for the most part. And I think Drabe, especially with 55 energy, is a great choice to back up your front line. He also has a really cool card text which reads, Each tattoo symbolizes a fallen friend. Drabe fears he will add several more before the fighting is done. I'd love to see a future episode on Drabe's past, and additionally I just love these card texts on the chaotic creatures. I think it's so cool to make you wonder about their history or maybe the image you're looking at in the card. It's something I've always had an appreciation for since I was a kid. Moving on to our third card, it is Almar Parathon Racer. This is another one that I use a lot on Chaotic Recode, and I'm sure if you guys play people who run Underworld decks, you're seeing this one a lot. A lot of people run two of these in the back, and it's for the ability. Expend fire, deal 10 damage to target creature. People love using this card, myself included, because each round you're dealing 10 or 20 damage depending on how many Almars you're running without spending any Mugic counters, without using an attack card. It's a great way to be an aggressive underworld player. His card text reads, To improve the Almanator's top speed, Almar removed all unnecessary components from the vehicle. Unfortunately, that included the brakes. I like that the chaotic creators didn't always give us a dramatic backstory with the card text. As seen on this one, sometimes they like to have a little joke, give the people a little laugh. These next two cards move a bit away from competitive play and back towards the lore of the show, but it is two copies of the Phobia Mask. And for those who saw the episode, you know why I ordered two. One for Kaz and one for Tom. The show made these out to be a lot more powerful than their actual printed cards, which read, Equipped Creature Gains Intimidate Courage 10 and Intimidate Power 10. Not horrible, but considering that Tom and Kaz were almost killed over these cards, I don't think that they quite live up to the show. However, after watching the episode, I did get a bit of a nostalgia kick and I had to order two of them. It was for a good price too. Now for our second last package of the opening, we are going with a definite fan favorite tribe, the Mepedians, and your hint is War Beast for this next one. No, not ultra rare, don't get too excited. But we did manage to get our hands on a nice copy of Gafatra, or Gafatra, however you pronounce his name. He's an awesome war beast. He's got 50 courage, 110 power, 105 wisdom, 50 speed, and 45 energy, rocking the air element. He's also a defender for conjurers, so that's pretty nice. Now his ability continues that kind of defender theme that this card has going on. It reads, non-attack damage dealt to adjacent royals is dealt to Gafatra instead. He also only has recklessness 10, which is nice. You can fix that with pretty much a single conjurer, depending on who you pick. And I feel like the theme of this video should just be really cool card texts because Gafatra has one as well. His reads, As the war turns grim, even royals have begun to accept the war beasts. While I don't currently run too many Mepedian decks, I definitely want to build one soon, and I feel like Gafatra is going to be one of the cards that I put in there, so I'm happy to have him on deck. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels this way, but the older I get, the more of a Mepedian fan I become. I don't know why, it just seems to be the way it is. And now I'm very excited because we're moving on to the final package of the video. I've been refusing to play with this card until I own it, and it is Takinam the Shadow Knight. Now a quick shout out to the seller for actually covering the code, I do appreciate that, and I have wanted this card for a long time. For those who know, this is a max energy Takinam with 70, and it is just an absolutely beautiful card. The ability reads, Strike 10. Creatures with Strike 10 deal an additional 10 damage with the first attack they make each combat, and she can spend one Mugic counter. The next attack made by Takinam counts as the first attack this combat. She's also got Swift 2 on top of that, so she can move further on the battle board. 
Additionally, this card has the air and earth elements, so do with that as you will for deck building. And she is just an awesome card, a fan favorite. The artwork is amazing. The holographic effect is beautiful. It's one of my favorite cards that Chaotic ever released, and I'm happy to finally have it in my collection. Not to mention, it's a well-deserved buff for Takinam compared to her Dawn of Param card, which was good for the time. But I think the Shadow Knight does justice to a fan favorite card that served alongside Kaor for the three seasons we saw her. And that concludes our first episode of the Chaotic Mail unboxing series. I hope you guys enjoyed. From time to time, I'm definitely going to be letting these packages stack up and making new entries into the series. And as you saw today, it'll be a combination of collecting for competitive sake and just for nostalgia's sake. I enjoy reading the card texts, looking at the artwork, and just talking about Chaotic with you guys. I hope to see you in the next video, and until then, let's get Chaotic.